check out our awesome hood ornament. All right, so today we are at my 11 acre cornfield and I'm gonna go get lost in the corn. So what I'm out here doing is I'm out here looking for any kind of fungus, most namely uh, northern corn leaf blight and anthracnose. Now, this is actually the first time I've walked through this corn since, well, it was not as tall as I am. And um, some things that I'm noticing is that we're having some, some, not a whole lot of anthracnose issues, which is pretty common. And I'll point them out in a little bit. But what I wanted to show you guys right now is I'm standing where, in a spot where the planter had overlapped a hair. Now, Usually, the rows should be spaced 30 inches apart, right? So like here, 30 inches apart. There, 30 inches apart. But we come down here, and we have a few that are, well, about seven inches apart. And you'll notice that the bottom leaves are burnt. And the reason for that is because since the plants are planted so close together, they're using up a lot of the nitrogen that's in the soil right there, and there's not a lot of nitrogen that's readily available to the plant. So as they're growing, the plants will steal nitrogen from the bottom leaves. And this is a, one of your markers that shows that you're having nitrogen deficiency because the outer, the outsides of the leaves are burned and the insides are have a little bit of color in them, but not that much. And that's because nitrogen is very very uh, mobile in the plant it the plant can pull it out from wherever it needs it like these two bottom leaves and send it up to the top of the plant so that's one sign of nitrogen deficiency and it's pretty common to notice where it might where we, where you might have over, overlap uh, because there isn't as much nitrogen readily available all right so i just got back from scouting out in the field and to my surprise, there really isn't that many issues, um, out of the ordinary, that is. Um, I was very pleased with what I saw, and nothing that I saw was real surprising. I have three leaf samples here that I want to show you guys. And these were all collected, I believe this is actually the very, the very bottom leaf, but they were all collected towards the bottom of the plant, which is pretty normal because that's where you have most of your fungus issues this time of year. Um, you don't often have them on the uh, top parts of the plant. So if you look right here, you can see these little spots. They have a little black center in the middle and they start, they have a brown ring around the outsides before it goes to green. And that is anthracnose. Um, it's one of the things I'm going to talk to you guys about today. And anthracnose is a pretty big issue because it can have a pretty big effect on your yield. And not all, actually every field has some anthracnose. There's no corn fields without them. Jamie and I just got this corn sample. We went out and dug up the whole corn plant. On the second from the bottom leaf, you can see that there's some anthracnose. And not a whole lot of anything else. A little bit of anthracnose there. Uh, that might be northern corn leaf blight. I'm not too sure. Otherwise, pretty healthy. So, I'm going to dig it away at the roots and see what I can find. Some really healthy roots. This corn, this field is corn on corn, and it has been that way for at least the last three years. Probably the only field I do that is in continuous corn. Are you sure it's still in there? Yeah, this is. Oh, it's found it. All right. See that right there? That is the original corn seed, and I scraped off the outer edge. You can see that green. That is the pesticide. I believe it's a fungicide. 
and it might be a bit of an insecticide on there too. You can see that there's pretty much nothing left in it because the corn plant pulled all the resources out of it once it started uh, producing its own nutrients with photosynthesis. And there's nothing but the empty husk left. If we look up in here, you can see that the roots are all coming from this one central point. I believe that to be the central point of the plant where this is where it all started and this is the first root because this is where the corn kernel was and it all came out I don't know where it broke off at maybe it broke off right here but it all started from there I'm gonna cut off the roots try to get a closer look on the inside of the corn plant I'm using a hacksaw because Because I didn't have my knife on me. So this is exactly what I was looking for. Now if you look at this, you'll see this brown band right there. And this brown band is caused from anthracnose because there's anthracnose, anthracnose in the soil. That's one way it can get up into the plant. And it can also get into the plant by spores in the air that, that the fungus will throw up into the air. They'll land on the plant and it'll infect it that way. But this right here in the crown of the plant acts like a filter. And here you can see it's filtering out the anthracnose. If I were to cut up higher, it wouldn't be as brown they wouldn't continue to be that brown because you can see it, it's a band. So I think that's pretty cool uh, that the plant, the crown of the plant acts as a filter for the rest of the plant to keep it healthy. And it filters out all that fungus and whatever else. Um, it's not 100% effective because obviously if we look at this leaf, it's kind of tattered, but you can see all these brown spots of anthracnose, like right there, especially. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys found that a little interesting. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about northern corn leaf blight. Uh, I couldn't find a lot of this, which was a little surprising, but here we have some northern corn leaf blight. And why is it called northern corn leaf blight? Because we're in the northern part of the US. And um, you can tell the difference between northern corn leaf blight and anthracnose, because northern corn leaf blight has long, str longer stripes and anthracnose, as you can see here, to me it looks like this is a little bit of both, but there is anthracnose with the little brown spots. That's how you can tell the difference. Northern corn leaf blight is actually pretty economical to control. It's one of the easiest funguses to control, and if you have a serious problem of it in your field, you probably should do something about it because to treat it is very inexpensive. And um, anthracnose, on the other hand, can be pretty expensive to try to control and in terms of economy-wise with uh, the cost effectiveness of your plans to eradicate it. Now I'm going to show you guys the different ways that northern corn leaf blight and anthracnose infect the corn plant. So starting with anthracnose, the one that's harder to control. So here's the, here's the edge of a corn leaf, right? Now, when anthracnose comes in, it comes in from above and it makes contact with the leaf, but the spores are shaped like little spikes. So, uh, when they come down, they penetrate into the corn leaf, into the corn leaf and that's the way that they can get into the plant because from here, then they start growing out in each direction and spreading. So here we have another corn leaf, and I'm going to show you guys how northern corn leaf blight infects the plant. So a couple of years ago, um, we had what was called Generation 1 northern corn leaf blight. And the reason it was called Generation 1 is because of the way that it infected the corn plants. Now, corn has holes in the leaves that allow it to breathe, and these are called stoma. But what they actually do is they come up, and they look like little volcanoes, really. 
just like that. And whenever a northern corn leaf blight spore comes down, it's just a round spore. It makes contact with the leaf. So here we have the northern corn leaf blight spore. And this is generation one. So what it did was it sent out its little arms until it reached one of these stoma. Then what'll happen is that it'll go up and it'll go down into the stoma and infect the leaf that way. So what the researchers at probably Monsanto thought was how could we economically control northern corn leaf blight? So what they did was they developed a breed of corn where you have your corn leaf, but the stoma are actually recessed. So instead of looking like little volcanoes, they come down like that. And there actually isn't that there. But they're little holes. And this allowed, whenever the first generation northern corn leaf blight came out, it would hit the leaf, it would send out its arms looking for the stoma, and it wouldn't find anything. So it would just keep sending its arms out until it used up all its resources and it would die. And that way it reduced northern corn leaf blight that was affecting the plants. However, as plants evolve, or as life evolves, there's such thing called generation two, and I can't remember what generation we're on now, I think it's like six or seven. But what the following generations of northern corn leaf blight did was when they'd come down and they'd hit the leaf, they would send out their arms, but instead of, instead of sending it out in a straight line, they would bounce up and then down. So that way it would be able to reach into the stoma that wasn't on the outside of the plant. This is what we currently have right now. And um, it's quite a problem for a lot of farmers. However, it is very e easy and effective, effectively controlled. I'm not a total professional on anthracnose and northern corn leaf blight and many other diseases out there. Um, I have a base knowledge of a lot of things. So um, yeah, I hope you guys found this a little educational um, and kind of gives you an idea on what farmers have to deal with and uh, try to control. So if you found this video interesting, be sure to share it and uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video educational or interesting. And be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. So uh, I'll see you next time, guys.